Now before we begin, what, three days ago now, the church of St. Martin de Pau in Ottawa, it was vandalized and smashed. Anti-Christian graffiti was painted on the wall and artwork. Statues were toppled over, damaged. Religious items were stolen. There were messages written attacking the Pope and numerous pentagrams, the symbol of Satanism, that were painted and drawn inside the building. A kitchen containing food that was for the poor was attacked and items stolen. And the, the gilded tabernacle, the center of Catholic worship, it was taken, stolen from the altar. The police are considering whether to label this a hate crime. Duh! <laughs> Maybe it was an act of love. No, I don't believe in hate crimes at all. It's either a crime or it's not. The motivation is not the issue. But this is clearly not about personal gain, but about a deep, dark expression of absolute hatred for Christianity. It would be absurd to argue that this was typical, but colossally naive to believe it to be unique. Sacred Heart Church in Calgary in 2010, that was attacked. Two churches in Toronto last year in the space of, what, two weeks? My own church, not that long ago. Churches are attacked actually quite frequently. Now imagine for a moment if, if these were not churches but mosques or synagogues. You know that it would be national headline news leading to documentaries and long articles in allegedly caring magazines. Now, we need to get all this in proportion. I have never been one of those people who believe that Christians are, are persecuted in the West. They are in Islamic nations and in North Korea and elsewhere, the most persecuted identifiable group on earth, in fact, but not in Canada and the US and Western Europe. Life is not as easy for Christians today as it was in the 1950s and 60s. The public square can be a challenging place, and the issue of same-sex marriage has made it more complex for Christians to speak out. But this is hardly persecution. And, hey, strong beliefs sometimes have strong consequences. So we must be careful not to overreact. But while I do not obviously attribute anything directly to anybody here and certainly don't think any politicians were behind this latest outrage, what does it say about respect for religion, and in particular for serious Christianity, when the leader of the Liberal Party, Justin Trudeau, effectively says that Catholics and evangelicals have no place in the political process? My preference is that we not uh, be engaging in in the discussion of abortions. For me, it's a it's a it's a it's a debate that is that has been uh, settled for the vast majority of Canadians, and we don't need to reopen that issue. Hmm, you will obey. This is serious, important stuff. We've discussed it before. There are some vital, self-evident truths here. Justin Trudeau says that to be a Liberal candidate, you have to be pro-choice. The Catholic Church says that to be a Catholic, you have to be pro-life. Thus, no Catholic can be a Liberal candidate. And it's simple, really, if you have the courage and the integrity to admit the truth of all this. So even if you spent your adult life working for the poor and the broken, the underprivileged, You've worked tirelessly for the Liberal Party. You've pursued all of its policies. You've now been told by the leader that you cannot and must not run for the Liberals and you are suddenly a, a non-person, rather like an unborn child in a way. Instead of arguing that Christians have a vital place in the great Canadian debate, just like William Wilberforce did in Britain and Martin Luther King in the United States, Trudeau and his people have said that the great faith of liberation and enlightenment is forbidden. Verboten! So why not smash up a church, steal the tabernacle, paint anti-Catholic slogans, abuse the Pope, in a way that's far less offensive than telling countless Catholics that they must sit at home, mind their own business, and know their place. Smash a church or smash the church? I think I know which one is worse.